Hi everyone, welcome back to another gameplay of BTD6. So let's continue with the updated series for Half Kush and Impopable. So right now I'm gonna do a four circles, Half Kush, as always using Quincy as hero and without using monkey knowledge, continues and powers. So this map is another pretty easy one because of the fact that if you place your towers around the center area, uh, you can attack multiple times the, the balloons. Every time they're gonna go through here each loop. Uh, and therefore, uh, for this gameplay, I'm gonna just start very, very simply with that monkey right here. So closest to the top in the center in strong targeting. And that's it. So it's, uh, it's slightly better placing it closest to the top. So in that way, um, you can still target, as you can see, this loop right here and this one right there just a little bit so with just one or two attacks uh, but yeah that's enough to have pretty good piercing you know with the with the darts and as you can see in round four by getting it one zero zero you can destroy everything so then for round five just get it one one zero and that, that should be enough to pop all the balloons until you can place uh, Quincy down so that's the start for this map another very easy map uh, easy positioning as well of this uh, that monkey. Right, so at the end of round seven, I should have enough cash to place Quincy. So I'm gonna just uh, remove all the start. All right, here we go. So now selling the that monkey, placing Quincy again, same spot, so closest to the top, and then in the center. Uh, right here, and yeah, that's it. So let's go with auto start once again. And uh, it's uh, I've seen that it's better doing this, so selling the Dark Monkey to place Quincy because you can still survive with just the Dark Monkey. Like round eight, round nine, you can still pop everything. Uh, but the problem is that if you wait longer to place Quincy down, then Quincy is gonna be lower in terms of experience, so he's gonna be a weaker. And that is going to be especially important for now on the 40 for the mob. So that's why I prefer like selling the monkey. I lose some cash in the process, but in that way I can place Quincy with uh, three rounds uh, earlier, and therefore uh, he can start leveling up. So just leave Quincy in first. Uh, so don't place him in strong. Just leaving him first should be good. And the next uh, is going to be uh, at the end of round 12, placing a, uh, a ninja. So you want to place this ninja closest to the bottom, uh, sorry, as close to the top and to the right of Quincy. So uh, like as close as possible to, towards Quincy and then closer towards the right. So a spot around here should be good. You can still see that the ninja can target the four loops. Um, and yeah, it's going to be important placing the ninja just like that because later on you're gonna have enough room to place a boomerang and also a uh, an alchemist right there in, uh, in this central uh, spot, so. Now next, round 15 as always, when you see the pinks uh, coming out, just use Quincy level three and that should be it. Uh, upgrade also the ninja 100. Then I'm gonna get this ninja 101 one, and then 201. So the strategy uh, for this half cash uh, gameplay is gonna be uh, exactly the same as I've showed you so far. So Quincy, then uh, ninja, and uh, then just uh, preparing for lab balloons, round 28. Now you can approach like the lab balloons in two different ways. You can either like place um, an alchemist and like get the alchemist uh, uh, just uh, like just placing it down or just getting it to zero zero. Or uh, you can place a sniper and get the sniper one zero zero. Like it's it's exactly the same in this map as well. There is there are no obstacles, so as you can see, the line of sight is free. The only obstacle is this one right there, but you will almost never place 
like a tower right there, so should be, should be good. Yeah, in this case, because this map is very easy, I'm gonna just use the Alchemist strategy to pop Labyrinths. But as I said before, if you wanna go with the Sniper strategy, it's also quite good. Uh, I think I'm gonna actually just leave this Alchemist uh, at 0, 0, 0. I'm not gonna even uh, upgrade it. So in that way I can afford this Ninja 401 a little sooner. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. And Quincy in a couple of rounds is gonna turn level 7, so Quincy is gonna gain a lot popping power with the Exploding Arrow, so that shouldn't be a problem. And in these rounds, there aren't really a lot of Labyrinths, just round 28, 30, and then I think uh, like round uh, 37 and 38. So it shouldn't be that problematic. As you could see, I placed the Alchemist like closest to the Ninja and then closest to the right side. There should be a lot of room here to place the boomerang, as you can see, so that's good. Just remember to have the alchemist set on strong. Right, so here, let's see, I'm gonna most likely use Queen C level 3 when the Labyrinths are gonna be coming out. Um, let's see, so yeah, right now. And that should be a Ninja 401. And now I'm gonna just get this Alchemist uh, just to zero, 0 just to have the Mixedip. And remember, the Mixedip is also more damage to uh, ceramics and mob class balloons. So that's gonna be a little bit extra damage uh, given to uh, the ninja at to Quincy for round 40. Another important thing, remember to save up uh, 800 cash so that you can manually level up Quincy to level eight at the end of round 39. So here we go. Then just use this level three as soon as the mob is in range. Uh, so in that way you can pop the mob earlier and then you only have this uh, you only have this, this Ramex like, to deal with, and that's uh, pretty much round 40, easy. And next I'm gonna just get this Alchemist upgraded. And it should give the brew uh, to the Ninja, because it's closer. You can use Queen C level 3 in round 43 if you want to, but it's not needed as you can see. So now I'm gonna uh, get the Alchemist right away for 0, zero uh, giving a stronger brew and also buff buffing Queen C. And then uh, I'm gonna build the village. That's my strategy. Right here we go. That's the alchemist. And now the village, you can build it in the left side or in the right side. is uh, is exactly the same. I'm gonna build it in the left side. So in that way, I'm gonna then later on be able to build some bombs right there um, to do to do some more damage. So that's why I'm gonna build this village right here. Uh, now, don't place this village uh, like too close towards the bottom because uh, uh, you're gonna gain extra range with this village regardless. So even if you don't have the alchemist in range of the village, it's uh, it's fine. So I'm gonna place this village, for example, around here. Should be good. Closest to the right, two zero zero, and as you can see, the alchemist now it's in range. So two zero two. Now discount. And uh, I'm gonna get Caltrops. And now um, I'm gonna just get this village 402 and then I'm gonna build the, uh, the Boomerang. 
Remember, from 63, it's very important having at least uh, a 402 boomerang that can pop uh, the ceramic rushes very, very easily. Well, the boomerang is a tower that they use. You can go with the top path, so 402, or you can even go with the middle path. You can go with a 240 uh, boomerang. It's just slightly more expensive, so that's why I prefer 402. But uh, yeah, going with the activated ability in the middle path of the boomerang is also a valuable choice. And then just to save up a little bit of cash, uh, what I like to do is uh, get first primary mentoring and then uh, I get the boomerang. Now this is for the reason that uh, as you get the fourth upgrade of the village, um, you're gonna see that the first upgrade of the boomerang so actually is of every primary tower, it's free. All right, so right there, boomerang. And you can see that the first upgrade is free. So that's more cash that you can save up uh, in this way. So yeah, next is just getting this boomerang 402. And also next, I'm gonna get this alchemist 401. So in that way, the alchemist will be able to buff Quincy. Because now you can see that uh, the boomerang is closer. So Ninja and Boomerang are closer to the Alchemist than Quincy, and therefore the Alchemist is giving the buff to uh, to those two towers. So if you just increase further the attack speed of the, of the Alchemist, um, you, can, uh, you can make it uh, buff again Quincy. Uh, yeah, for this BFP, I'm gonna just use uh, his level three just to clean uh, clean the round faster, but uh, it's definitely not needed. So here we go, and now you can see the blue uh, once again on Quincy. All right, uh, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exploit this uh, primary mentoring village to build uh, some mob molars. So I'm gonna change a little bit the strategy for this last uh, uh, for this last rounds until round 80. So I'm gonna use uh, just something different from the usual. Now the important thing is that this first bomb that you place, you try to place it as close as possible towards the bottom, always in range of this village. But don't place the bomb too close like this because otherwise the Alchemist may end up buffing the bomb rather than Quincy. So remember to place this first bomb so that Quincy is always closer to the Alchemist than uh, the, the bomb. So I think here should be pretty clear that it's like more distant, so the Alchemist should keep on buffing Quincy. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna get this bomb on strong, 030. And then I hope that uh, you guys were able to see my um, comparison video where I compared the mod molar and the cross path. So is it better to go with a 230 mod molar or 032? And from my analysis, I was able to find that if you're gonna use your mod molars to do damage overall, like to group balloons, uh, it's always better to build them 230. So that's what I'm gonna do. The next uh, uh, single round is gonna be only around 80. So uh, that's the only scenario where a 032 molar is better. But in this case, in all the like 99% of rounds will be with multiple blooms at once. So this cross path is always better and you're gonna end up doing more damage. So that's, that's it. So let's get another uh, bomb right here. Alright, 230 in strong. And just keep on building mob molars. I'm gonna try to get uh, at least maybe like five. Alright, so that's four. I'm gonna just get one more. Uh, and yeah, it's already round 73, so just uh, a couple more rounds to go. 
and you can see how fast I'm destroying mob claspers. Mob molars do extra damage to ceramics and to uh, mob claspers. So that's very nice. So here, uh, yeah, I should be able to fit one. Or maybe, yeah, maybe just here then. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. Like the exact spot where these bombs are placed. Uh, and now, just another tower that I want to build just in case for round uh, uh, 80 is uh, right here a mob press. So closest to this right side, alright. 0 to 4 mob press. And that should be good. And I think uh, uh, that's gonna be enough for this uh, gameplay. Now, another very important thing. Uh, on this strategy is uh, around 78 because the second ceramic rush is camo and right now the only towers that have camo detention are Quincy and the ninja so uh, the second rush in round 78 is a killer you end up always losing uh, even if you use Quincy level 3 so the best way to uh, to solve uh, that is just use Quincy level 10 So with that, you should be able to clear up these ramex very easily. And uh, yeah, that's it. So have it ready. And let's see, here we go. So those are the ceramics, just use it and uh, that's it. So let's use this extra cash that I'm earning just to place uh, one last molar, why not? Seems uh, seems fun. Maybe I can even drop another one, a seventh one. Yeah, nice. All right, and that's it. So that was uh, this strategy for this map, a little different from the usual. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, see ya. Bye bye.